Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, host of the podcast NOV Today, and glad you're joining us for uh, today's conversation as we jump into the world of uh, PDC uh, drill bit technology and really focusing on some innovative cutter technology today uh, with our guests. So it should be a really great conversation and looking forward to having you be a part. Uh, before we jump into our conversation, uh, we're going to pull in uh, Shelby Dumain, who manages social media for NOV, mm -hmm. and she's going to give us a quick rundown as how you can be a part of our conversation today. Hey, Shelby, good to see you. Hey, Michael, it's great to see you as well. Uh, so today, while we're live here on the show, um, the great thing about being live is that we can take uh, you, the audience at home, we can take your questions throughout the show. So if you have a question at any point for our expert on the show today, you can comment it in the comment section below. Whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, I am live in the comments. So I will see all of those as they come in, and we are going to get to as many questions um, and comments as we can during the show. Uh, speaking of questions and comments, we have our first segment today, which is the Rig Geeks Post of the Week. Rig Geeks Post of the Week. So I know it's been a while since we've done Rig Geek Post of the Week with uh, NOV Live International last week. Um, but to remind uh, those who are maybe new to the show or, or it's been a few weeks, Rig Geek Post of the Week is where I'm, I ask a trivia question, something about the industry or some technology, maybe something to do with the, the show that we're doing today. And uh, we're going to pull up a photo, ask a question, and then at the end of the show, we're going to reveal the answer. So throughout the show, if you think you know the answer to the trivia question, you can comment that below as well. And we're going to see if uh, any um, rig geeks out there can, can guess, can play the game and, and win. Uh, if we could pull up the picture for this week. So since we're talking um, about cutter technology and, and a little bit about Reed Hykelog here in a minute, um, the question for this week is what year did Reed Hykelog run its first fixed cutter PDC drill bit? Um, and there, there's the question on the screen right there. So we have this photo, um, it's, a, it's a throwback picture. And if you want bonus points, uh, can you name the gentleman in the photo? Uh, it's the engineer and the engineering, I'm sorry, the designer and the engineering manager. Uh, so the main question is in what year did Reed Hykelog uh, run its first fixed cutter PDC drill bit. And for bonus points, can you name the gentleman in the photo? All right, uh, to, uh, stay tuned. And then at the end of the show, we will reveal those answers. All right, Michael, back to you. All right. Thanks, Shelby. Sounds good. Well, uh, as Shelby mentioned, we are talking about technology from NOV's Reed Hykelog uh, business unit and specifically talking about cutter technology. And to uh, help us understand that, uh, we have the pleasure of talking with uh, Tom Roberts, who is the Vice President of PDC Strategy and Development, joining us from Conroe, Texas. So, uh, Tom, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. So, uh, maybe before we dive in, uh, I know that, uh, you know, with, with drill bits and cutter technology and, and everything that goes into it, uh, there's been... You know, everyone's kind of in the same boat and, and uh, facing some of the challenges uh, in the market uh, that's been uh, uh, a result of some of the uh, market conditions and, and COVID as well. So could you talk about maybe some of the, the challenges and, and how you all are, are facing that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess that's, that's a very good question to start with. Uh, one thing I would say, though, is that really our plan is to uh, is to remain focused on our strategy, and that's designing and improving better product for, for applications for our customers around the world. Um, so it's true we have to do more with less today, uh, but, but but now more than ever, it's very important that we have improved performance for our customers. So every, everyone is looking to lower costs today, and, and what better way to do that by applying uh, state-of-the-art, uh, efficient cutter technologies so that they can drill their well more efficiently, faster, and, and TD the section. So these are, that, this is why these, uh, you know, these, uh, these cutters and, and, the, and the drill bits that we provide from Reed High Clog are really important for the, for the operator to provide valuable uh, for their applications. Right. So let's maybe, maybe we can stay on, on this topic uh, because I know 
and it's I've had I had the pleasure of actually starting uh, my my oil field career in in Reed Hagalog right down the hall from you. So it's it's, yeah. it's uh, a good some good uh, memories. Years. Yeah. yeah. Ho hopefully I, d I did did an okay job. But yeah. but one of the things I wanted to talk to was uh, talking about the idea of. Uh, 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 the the advancements that we're having in Ion and, and Ion Pro. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, these basically Ion was our step towards designing application specific cutters uh, for the applications uh, globally. So we have a wide range of uh, cutters, whether they're cutters that fail from um, that need greater abrasion resistance or thermal resistance or toughness, impact, strength, etc. So we have a group of engineers uh, that are focusing daily on developing improvements for any given application. So we do the forensics and we're trying to figure out how can we over overcome those performance limiters in any given application. Uh, this chart here for ION just shows over the last uh, eight years, a huge uh, improvement in performance. You can see as each grade is, is being, this is just really a, a fraction of the many grades that we, we have in our portfolio today. And we've had, you know, it's shown here a 300% increase in, in abrasion resistance through to 2020. So more than ever, we have some, some great product coming through. In fact, we've beaten the, uh, the 2020 is already split between many different grades and have improved performance than, than is shown on this chart. So, so this is really a, a, a large focus of our, our group, um, providing an, and our understanding of how different rock formations fail cutters. And uh, really we're applying that, um, getting the exact right grade to overcome those performance limiters. And then more recently, we've been applying this to, to shape cutters such as the uh, ION 3D. Hmm. So for those that just joined us, we're talking with Tom Roberts, who is the Vice President of PDC Strategy and Development with Reed Hikelog. And we're talking about uh, advancements in uh, cutter technology uh, and specifically how that applies uh, in today's market. Uh, so if you have questions for Tom as our conversation unfolds, feel free to put those in the comments section, uh, whether you're watching on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or LinkedIn, and uh, we will get to those questions in just a little bit as, uh, as those questions come in. So glad you're joining us and uh, feel free to join and jump in to the conversation. So, uh, uh, Tom, I wanted to uh, maybe touch on a point you you made just a moment ago, and uh, you know you had that graph graphic that that showed the advancements of the cutter technology, and and candidly, I think it's really good, but I think people at the end of the day want to say, great, but you know how has that really benefited you know folks in the real world, so to speak? So, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um... There's, there's several, I mean, basically we've had breakthroughs in, in global applications and we, we our team uh, look after Eastern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere. Um, I guess closer to home in Texas, for West Texas, what one that I can talk about is we have, it's a very tough application where you have to drill through interbedded formations, um, particularly in the vertical and lower vertical, it gets very difficult and challenging. There we were, we were experiencing breakage uh, on the, the, the tougher grades that we'd uh, uh, prepared for that application. With a detailed forensics, we're able to really look in, in to a high level to understand what was causing that failure. And what we found in that instance was that actually the, the, the carbide substrate supporting the diamond was suffering from corrosion and then erosion. And we developed a, a, a move, more improved uh, grade uh, with improved uh, corrosion erosion resistant carbide and applied a tougher diamond grade to that and that today is just doing fantastic it's doing really well uh, it made all the difference and uh, again this is where our customers were able to benefit and uh, avoid you know bits being damaged beyond repair and being able to complete the section so that's just one example um, and then the other one is uh, i guess the ion 3d over the last two or three years has just taken off globally it's just done so well, it's uh, a, a new a new shape that we've introduced. And what's really important though, is to make sure that we have the exact right grade that's specific to the application, and then combine that with with uh, with with, with Ion 3D, which is our new uh, flagship cutter for that. Yeah, so let's, I mean, you're, uh, so the Ion 3D is actually uh, something that I was was able to, to talk to some of the, the team about uh, a while back. Uh, but, uh, you know, in hearing a lot of, about the, the ION 3D, 
the shape cutters. I wanted to maybe talk about that as well. So what are some of the, uh, the you know, the key technologies that that customers can look to, to take advantage of? And maybe within that, what are some of the things that, that you're seeing that that's working well uh, in, in incorporating that that particular approach? Uh, yeah, so um, Ion 3D is is a, a way that we've been able to develop a shape that better fails the rock. Um, and if you see in, in the, the picture here, what we're looking at here, you, with a standard full round cutter, which is what we're all used to uh, in the industry, uh, we can develop grades, as I've said earlier, that, that'll be more efficient uh, and uh, avoid wear mechanisms and breakage. But what happens is, we, what we've done is we, we've looked at how better to fail the rock and how to do it more efficiently. If we see the, the picture on the right, the, the cracks that are produced into the rock, and by the way, this is the actual scan of the rock following drilling that rock in our drilling laboratory. Um, uh, we see that the cracks go through the rock. So a lot of energy is wasted uh, as, as we shear through in the, in the shearing direction. With the, with the Ion 3D, what we have now is a way of point loading the rock. And you can see how the, 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 the scan image on the right, the cracks propagate to the surface more easily. Um, and what this does is we get much more compacted, dense um, formation chips and more efficient removal uh, and, and, uh, of the rock as we're drilling. So this is basically um, the, applying this to a point loading and this shape is, is, is what's really working extremely well. Now in the laboratory, we saw a 20% increase in ROP. Uh, in the field, we get that and, and more. And it's, it's, it's really, it's been a, a massive breakthrough. And we're trying this in, in formations all over the world, whether that's sandstones, but particularly applicable to carbonate formations such as uh, limestones. So this is where it's working well. Um, we have various configurations. Uh, we have one which uh, I think was mentioned last week by, by Bob, which is the saber tooth. And that's where we have a, a mixture of full rounds and 3Ds to spread out the point loading and also get the best of both worlds. Uh, so that's working extremely well. Um, but uh, various configurations of this, and like I say, it's, it's, uh, it, what's, what's really impressive is, is how tough these cutters are uh, to complete the section. Mm. So, so it's interesting you uh, talk about the, you know, the advantages and what's working. And uh, so it seems like the uh, full rounds are actually faster and, and more, uh, the 3D is actually held up faster than more than the, the full round. So it makes me want to know about additional developments that you've, you've had, and maybe specifically, um, you know, how those developments are, are working for customers? Well, um, I guess uh, more recently, um, although we've had such great success with the 3D, there there have been people that have questioned that how can a, how can a, applying a shape uh, to point load the rock be more tougher from the cutter itself? You know, how can it be stronger than a full round cutter? And uh, so what we, we, we decided to do is look at the strongest, hardest rocks that we, we can drill in the lab to really prove the point. Uh, we'd seen it already in the field, but um, you know we really needed to show our customers how, how tough and uh, how strong these cutters were. So we, we went to work uh, initially testing on the Sierra White Granite. We use that a lot for our, our wear mechanism tests for both thermal and abrasion. And that's the, the picture on the left there. Um, and then if you get the picture on the right is the quartzite. Now with the quartzite, you can see it's very rugged and tough and actually reaches uh, compressive strengths of uh, above 50,000 uh, uh, confined strength there, PSI. Um, uh, and you can see that the, the reason that's rugged, by the way, instead of a nice neat uh, block you see on the left is because they have to use explosions to break that out. It's extremely oh, wow. tough, hard rock. Um, but the results surprised even ourselves. Uh, the goal here was we were going to drill on each rock at uh, 20,000 and 30,000 pounds weight uh, with a, a six-bladed test bit. And the only change was that we were going to put full rounds in, in one and then uh, uh, exactly the same bit, but with the Ion 3D applied to the other. Uh, so what was interesting, if we look at the results on the Sierra White Granite, we found that uh, we were able, as we increased the weight, we were able to spool and break the uh, uh, 
uh, the, the the rank cutters, and you can see this in the in the pictures uh, in the top top right, uh, uh, left and right there. Um, so the diamond was able to break, um, but what happened with the 3D is we didn't get a breakage. In fact, we were you know once we broke the uh, four rounds at twenty thousand pounds weight, we weren't able to go any further with the test. But the 3D survived that, and then we uh, we upped that uh, to thirty thousand pounds, and we were still unable to break them. So this was a, a really a great piece of evidence for us to show that the failure mechanisms are not just faster, providing less torque, uh, but they were able to better fail the rock rather than the rock fail the cutters as it did with the full rounds. Mm. Uh, we went one step further and then uh, drill on quartzite. I think I say this quartzite is extremely, uh, has a extremely hard rock, uh, 56, 64,000 uh, KSI um, and, in strength. And once again, we were able to break the full rounds at 20,000 pounds. But when we went to the, uh, uh, the 3D, still no breakage. Uh, we did get some uh, thumbnail cracks, as we call it. So it's, it's on its limit once we applied 30,000 pounds. So we were able to go much strong, much higher on the weight, um, but a, a, a great result to show how tough um, this, the, you know, the, this, this shape is. Now, just to finish on that, we, we have published an SPE paper and that was given at the Galveston uh, SPE in March, just before this lockdown. It was probably the last SPE show uh, with, with people in attendance at early March. And uh, we presented our findings there and worked with, uh, um, with ExxonMobil on, on a joint paper there. So there was a lot more work. So if those are interested, um, we can supply the SPE paper for those to look at. Yeah, no, I think that'll be good. and. For, uh, for those that just joined us, we're talking to Tom Roberts, who's the Vice President of PDC Strategy and Development with Reed Heikelog, and we're talking about uh, the ION PDC cutter technology, the breakthroughs and, and additional uh, insights into that space. So um, we're going to continue our conversation, Tom, uh, but it looks like we actually have several folks that are watching now that, that have some questions that we want to try to get to uh, before we we uh, continue on. So I'm going to bring in Shelby Dumain uh, to see if we can get some of those questions uh, answered by by the Tom Roberts. I don't know any other Tom Roberts, so you're just the Tom Roberts to me. <laughs> All right, I'll do my best. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All Thanks, right. Shelby. So this first question comes from LinkedIn. Can you talk a little bit about where um, the ion cutters are being tested? Yeah, sure. Um, Basically, in all applications globally, ION is our flagship, our, our best cutter technology. Uh, we are getting close to launching ION Plus. Uh, we've started to field test that. This is an enhanced grade, uh, thicker, denser, stronger diamond grades with uh, ultimate leach profiles, uh, deeper with, with side leach than, than ever before. Um, but we're, yeah, we're trying these globally um, in, in pretty much all read high clock drill bits are going to have this technology now. Uh, so, so in any challenging applications, uh, whether that's in the Middle East, um, uh, whether it's Norway, whether it's North America or Latin America, we're, we're applying this technology. So it's working extremely well across all rock types. Um, so, so yeah, it's pretty much, uh, it's, it, it's a big success story for us. Mm -hmm. Great. So another question also coming from LinkedIn, Sandra is wondering how do these work in reservoirs with oil-based mud? Um, they, they work with oil-based mud or water-based mud, uh, not a problem either way. Uh, we get uh, adequate cooling to the, to the, as long as we get adequate cooling with, with efficient hydraulics, um, no issues at all um, in, in oil-based mud, so not a problem. Great. Uh, so for this next question, I know we can't reveal uh, the secret recipes, the secret sauce, so to speak, but Margarita, um, also on LinkedIn, was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the materials used to prevent um, or reduce corrosion. Yeah, that's a difficult one for us to go into. Like you say, we've got to keep the, uh, the, the intellectual property, uh, um, you know, close, close to chest. But um, basically there we... We, we understood the problem. That was the first issue, you know, where we had to do a lot of uh, forensics and uh, high level investigation to figure out why the diamond was, was chipping and breaking. And we realized that the erosion and corrosion was so bad at the back, uh, almost immediately behind the diamond table, that this is where the diamond table was chipping and breaking once it hit the harder rock uh, into bedded formations. 
so uh, really all we've done there was to in you can't just change out the you know put an erosion corrosion substrate on there and then expect the whole diamond cutter to center to, and have the same properties so there's there's a lot of art um, involved in science to ensure that you create this, uh, this the, a tough, strong, strengthened diamond with with that more erosion uh, corrosion resistant uh, uh, carbide that's applied. But uh, I can't go into any, too much more detail than that. Um, but that's that's basically why it worked. Yeah, we, I won't I won't twist your arm arm any further. I, I know that's that's probably as far as you want to go. So that's that's no problem. But thank you for the for the insight. That's that's helpful. Uh, no so. Problem. So when we um, maybe when we talk about the Ion 4D, uh, can you can you unpack that for some folks to say okay, you know maybe they're familiar with the Ion uh, range of cutters and, and maybe kind of understand uh, uh, other approaches. But with the Ion 4D range, can you talk about why why is that more efficient and can you talk maybe about that and, and how it's performing in the field as well? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, and by the way, I, I reached out to one of our customers um, to, to let them know we were working on this for today, this, this, uh, to, to have this live uh, discussion. And uh, one of the points, I guess, is a good lead in here is he, he said that even though we, we had such breaking records with lower torque, faster drilling with the 3Ds, um, you know, one of the things that Reed Highclog did was to go one step further. And this is where the 4D came in. Uh, so in our approach, like I say, we're relentlessly trying to come up with more improved geometries. And years ago, this was not possible, right? Because manufacturing technology such as uh, either forming the diamond or using lasers uh, to precision uh, uh, shape the geometry uh, without uh, harming the properties of the diamond. This is what why this really works. So. What we have here is a, is a family of the 4D, which has full rounds with laser shaped uh, front to, to apply a, uh, a point loading in the shearing direction or a plow effect, if you, if, if you like. Um, and that's what we have there, as well as a relieved angle on the lower side where hydraulics are able to curve the formation chip being created um, away from the cutter face. And this provides a lower torque, uh, more efficient cutting action. And then furthermore, we then applied the 3D chisel to the side of the uh, 4D cutter, which is the 4DC and, and the, the 4DXE, which is an extended tougher version. And uh, this way we get the best of both worlds. Now we're getting the plow effect in the, or point loading effect in the shearing direction as we cut through the rock. But we've also got the indentation point loading in the actual weight and bit direction. So we get the, uh, you know, a a product that's able to drill extremely fast. Uh, and then the only way this can all work is, of course, is if we have the exact right grade that's being formulated uh, for the given application. So that's what we see here from left to right is the, the 4D to the 4DXC, uh, which is our our, uh, uh, our our one of our fastest cutters, I would say, today to date. And uh, these, these are outperforming the 3Ds and give another boost in ROP performance for our customers while um, providing less torque. This is uh, this is really insi I, insightful. I, I, I glanced over at, at some of the comments on LinkedIn. Uh, Jim, Jim said, uh, NOV University. Is that, Thanks for sharing, because this is really, I mean, and, and to that point, I mean, there's a lot of insight and and uh, and technology and and teamwork that's going into developing these uh, these cutters and and really advancements that that we're talking about. Um, one quick follow up before I, I move on, uh, I wanted to see if you could talk about how you're leveraging NOV's uh, research and development technology center uh, in addition to to other testing facilities to to help uh, validate and and test uh, some of these uh, breakthroughs that that we're having. Yeah, so we have a um, we have the rig at Navasota, so the full rig where we can test full bits. But we also have a, a drilling laboratory uh, at, at Conroe as well, and so we 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 can test uh, all of our downhole tools here, uh, our drilling rig, it's a state of the art facility, uh, as well as all the um, you know the downhole uh, optimization, whether we're running a wire drill pipe. With downhole black box recorders and and uh, various instrumentation to uh, re 
to ensure that we're, we're drilling well. So all of our downhole tools, whether it's agitator or motors, everything can be, as well as drill bits, can right. be tested at this facility. But here at Conroe, we also have the drilling lab, and this is what we we have a um, a new single cutter test um, a pressure chamber, which we can talk about. We also have the the drilling lab as well, as uh, where we can do full full yeah. scale bit tests. No, that's good. So you know, you've you've been talking a lot of, and focusing on the uh, the efficiency and drilling uh, for customers. Um, what about the more difficult applications uh, that suffer? Uh, maybe more historically from impact uh, impact breakage. Do you have anything kind of on the horizon that you're looking to maybe solve in, in that space? Um, we do. Uh, we're working towards a uh, what we're calling the ION 5D, uh, which is going to be for tougher applications. Uh, this is actually um, the first time that we've actually come up with something that, that actually uh, it's not necessarily designed for efficiency, but it's designed to uh, withstand really large impacts down whilst it's going through various uh, drilling uh, rock formations, interbedded hard rocks, for example. Um, but but I would like to uh, talk a little bit more about the the 4D cutter and and show some of the um, the videos of the testing from our pre-cut, which will actually help us understand how the rocks fail. Is that something that uh, we we could discuss? I think we've got uh, a graphic that we'll put up in a, a moment that can help show that. Uh, okay. Yep. Here we go. Yeah, this is it. So this is uh, what we're looking at here is in our, inside our, our pressure chamber. And on the left, you can see very large ribbons being cut. And what's really fascinating for me here is that when we think about a sandstone, and uh, if you look how the, the 4D is on the right, and you can see here how the uh, much thinner ribbons are being generated. Uh, and like I say, we're recording all the forces, we're recording the torque uh, response of these cutters. And then we, we do these single cutter tests, measure all this, and then we also uh, do the full scale bit tests. If we take another look now, we can see what this looks like from the side view. This is a, a pressure chamber okay. again. What we're looking at is uh, the, a sandstone. Uh, this is a Tory buff sandstone with a, inside a mineral oil uh, under pressure. Uh, we can go up to 10,000 PSI to simulate the downhole conditions of our drill bits. And um, what's surprising is when you think about a sandstone, you think about it powdering away. But here, under pressure, you do get formation chips. Mm. And the picture on the left is a conventional planar um, a flat cutter. And you can see how the cutter is loaded up as the formation chip slides up. So it's creating friction there. It's creating loading. Uh, and this is multiplied by the many cutters on a drill bit. But then when we look at the 40, look how it curves away. The formation mm. is curling away from the face. What that does is it lowers the torque. So we get the same, um, we get improved drilling efficiency. You can see it closer to the end here, how the, the rock is curling away off the face of the diamond. So this is what, what our engineers are working on, uh, understanding how to fail the rock, obviously, having the right grade for durability, but also understanding how we can improve our efficiency. And having a lower torque is really important for the, the bottom hole assembly, whether you're on a motor, motor or rotary steerable. Um, holding tool face for a directional response, all of these things, having a lower torque is very important for our, our customers. Yeah, that's that's really that was a really interesting graphic. Um, and it's, it's really good also to know, to your point uh, earlier, that uh, that you have the facilities and capabilities to really hone in and and not only observe but measure all of those uh, forces and effects in order to produce the the, the cutter technology that that we have now. So uh, yeah, it's, it's but, giving us a, a great insight, and it's good for our customers to see this. Um, like I say, we're we're training our our uh, engineers all over the world with this technology and and bringing this to the customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and transition into trying to getting uh, get in as many uh, questions as we can. I know uh, we've actually got several that are that are lined up. So um, for those that, uh, if we don't get to your question, we'll we'll give you a way to uh, get your question directly into Tom uh, in in uh, after the program. But uh, Shelby, we'll go ahead and 
and try to get in a few uh, questions and uh, see if we can't get those answered for folks. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, Michael. So I do also want to mention we have a few NOV representatives in the comments right now who are also helping answer questions. So if we, uh, like Michael said, if we don't get to your question in this time, uh, we will get it answered as, as much as possible. Uh, so we have this next one comes from R.D. Morrison on LinkedIn, and it's a bit of a long one, so excuse me, I'm going to read a little bit. Uh, okay. Are you still able to leach shaped cutters to the same depths as standard cylinder cutters? He says, in other words, are 3D and 4D cutters as thermally stable as your best uh, standard cylinder cutters? That's a great question. And hi, RD. Uh, I know RD well, so it's good to hear from you. Um, yes, well, that's a great question. So um, typically, leaching can be done at, and the shaping can be done at the end, but um, we don't want to go into too much detail on that. But I will say that we do test for thermal stability on both full round cutters and shape 3D and 4D, etc. And we ensure that we have um, exactly the same if not better, thermal resistance applied to the, uh, the, particularly the cutting tip, the cutting edge that's uh, drilling through the, the rock. So um, that's all part of our, our testing environment. And um, we, we have all those results to, to fall back on. So great question, though. You, know, you would not want to sacrifice thermal resistance. So leaching technology um, is, is absolutely applied to, to, the, to both shaped and full round cutters. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and uh, we have another question from Xavier on LinkedIn. He was wondering how much less uh, WB or weight on bit is required to fail the rock compared to uh, round cutters. Another great question. Um, it's difficult for me to recall on that. I know that um, we get faster ROP with a shaped cutter compared to the uh, full range. So if we, if we see a you know, sometimes 20 or 50% increase in ROP with that. Um, particularly in the lab, we, we've certainly seen those those uh, areas. It, it's fair to say that if we were to lower the weight of a shaped cutter to match the ROP of a full round, therefore we would need less weight, right? If that makes sense. Um, so um, it's fair to say that you would definitely need uh, uh, less weight uh, so certainly great for applications where where it's difficult to get weight to the drill, but maybe laterals, um, but um, difficult to, you know, we, we can get a precise number. I just don't have that uh, immediately to hand. And it all depends on the rock type that we're drilling. Um, but absolutely, you know, the same as we're getting an increase in ROP uh, for a given weight, then therefore it makes sense that uh, it will drill at the same ROP with far less weight. Good. Well, this has been really good, Tom. Um, I know we're about to move into our next segment of the show, but for those that want uh, additional information on uh, the ion shape cutters or, or or really any of the the solutions and technologies with Reed Hikelog, uh, I think the easiest way for them is to maybe send you an email. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, my email is uh, tom uh, dot roberts at nov dot com. So I'd be more than happy to take uh, take uh, any any emails that come my way. But I'm not, and if I really perhaps I can forward that to the right person within the country that that, that you're working. So, uh, but more than happy to to set up presentations for our customers as well. Um, so you know, let let us know how we can help. We're here to help, and that's what we're like. I said at the beginning of the call. If we can save the, the customer money by providing greater efficiency, that's what, what that's what we're trying to do. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll definitely make sure uh, to have that. And uh, in addition, if you'd like to uh, view at your own leisure uh, on the NOV website, we'll put that uh, URL on the screen as well. And we'll be sure to put that in uh, the uh, LinkedIn post and uh, try to put that in the comments as well for those of you that would like to check out uh, the, the ION series of cutters or, or any of the other drill bit technology that NOV has to offer. So thanks, Tom. Been good talking with you and uh, appreciate your insight. Yeah, thank you, Michael. It's been great. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. So we are now going to go ahead and uh, wrap up by bringing uh, Shelby Domain back in as we give you the answer for the Rig Geeks post of the week. And uh, before we Show the answer. Do you, do you want to put up the original graphic first, Shelby? Sure. So we'll have the original picture. 
Um, and as a reminder, we asked the question, what year did Reed Heikelog run its first fixed cutter PDC drill bit? All right, and we actually did get some um, good uh, guesses. The closest we got was Dan F on LinkedIn. Well, folks, the answer is, we're gonna have the answer pull up. So the year was 1974 on the Isle of Wight. And for the bonus question, um, I asked you who the gentleman in the photo, uh, the photograph were, and that is um, the designer, John Fuller, there on the left, and on the right is the engineering manager, John Barr. Um, so yeah, so thank you everybody for participating in the Rig Geek uh, post of the week. All right, sounds good. Thanks so much, Shelby. And thank you for joining us today on uh, this uh, segment of NOV Live. If you have any additional questions about what we talked about today, feel free to put it in the comments section, or you can head to NOV.com and uh, select the contact us button there, and we'll be glad to get in touch with you as well. So for all of us here at NOV, thanks for joining us and thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you later.